Dar es Salaam, the bustling commercial capital of Tanzania on the East African coast. The country gained independence from Britain in 1961 and unlike many other African nations has been spared serious internal conflict. Over 40 million people belonging to over 130 tribes live in Tanzania. It was December 2009 when Transworld Sport headed to this part of the world to find out more about the country's albino population. Albinism is a hereditary condition where the recessive gene prevents the body from making the pigment melanin. At the time of our visit, there were an estimated 170,000 albinos in Tanzania. Sadly, we discovered how albinos face discrimination on a daily basis due to superstitions and traditional beliefs. Ernest Kimaya, the chairman of Tanzania's Albino Society, was one of the first people we spoke to in Dar es Salaam. Our main aim is to educate people about albinos, make them understand who we are, what problems we have, and how they can help us. This is a major task and our main work here at the society. We do this all over Tanzania, with representation in 21 regions. It shocked us to learn that in the years prior to our visit, gruesome ritual killings of albinos had taken place. Albinos were targeted for their body parts used in cannibalistic witchcraft. A lot of people believe that you can become rich if you get hold of the organs of an albino. Witch doctors who support this belief are deceiving people because obviously this isn't true. This has never been the case. But people are cheated into believing it because many think and say albinos are insignificant and have no use. Their perception is completely wrong. Just across the road from the Albino Society office was a somewhat dilapidated football pitch, the training ground for Albino United. The team was set up by local businessman Oscar Daniel Ole. I started the team after a series of albino killings. I thought that if we had a football team, we could use it to show those who back these killings that albinos are human beings just like everybody else. They're not supposed to be hunted down and killed like animals. So it's a good way to get this message across quickly, because the whole world loves football. The team was formed in 2008 and is still supported by both Hole and the Albino Society. We were told how many albinos here lived in isolation, tucked away out of shame by their families, with little or no opportunity to enjoy life and make something of themselves. It was only on the football pitch where many felt accepted for the first time. I joined the team after I heard about the latest killings of albinos. I've played football before, and I'm actually quite good at it. You could say I have a bit of talent. It seemed a very good time to join the team and stand up to those who support the killings. It was about time that we got together and started to cooperate with other albinos to fight together as a group. The lack of pigmentation in albinos creates many health risks, especially under the blazing Tanzanian sun. There's an increased chance of skin cancer, and many albinos suffer from eye defects and have poor vision. Outdoor activities have to be strictly limited to late afternoons, when the sun isn't so strong. People laughed at me when I started coaching the team. They told me it would be impossible, and they thought albinos can't play football. But I continued to coach them. I do this voluntarily because I want everyone to know that they can play. Just watch them. In Tanzania, albinos rarely receive an education, and many live in extreme poverty. Health issues coupled with the stress of discrimination on a daily basis have left many within the albino community psychologically damaged, and some were keen to highlight their plight to us. Mm 
Let me tell you what it's like being an albino. One of the main problems is the constant feeling that we are never appreciated or valued in any way. Society sees us as freaks. It wasn't our plan to be here. This is God's intention. Tanzania, the land of Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest peak, is an underdeveloped, poverty-stricken country, the majority of whose population lives in the countryside. There are high levels of illiteracy, and many people continue to believe in witchcraft. In 2009, Transworld Sport was told how the government here was trying to put an end to the albino killings. President Jakaya Kikwete had recently appointed Aoshima Kwaigia as the first and only albino MP. It was seen as a major breakthrough for the whole of the albino community. Our main priority is education. We need to educate people all over the country. The Ministry of Social Development has provided a van that will be used to show films about the real situation of albinos so we can tackle issues like the segregation of children, the situation for women and many other albinos. This van is going to pass through all the regions to inform all our citizens. We left Tanzania fully aware that more needed to be done to improve the lives of the nation's albinos. Government action in appointing an albino MP was a very positive development, as was the fact that Albino United were playing regular matches in the country's fourth division. Our visit helped highlight the plight of albinos in Tanzania, and our defining memory was of how sport could help to break down barriers, bringing people together. A lot of people thought that I would fail when I started the team, but I thank God that it's still going strong over a year and a half later. We wanted this team because these people were completely isolated. There was no place for them in society. They were not integrated. But thanks to the football team, many people now know who Albino United are and what an Albino actually is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>